Barely eight months after its offshoot, the livestock intensification project is said to be making great progress in the rural districts of Nyanija, Chamen, and Sabah Sanjan, with five strategic intervention areas. The project has about five resort areas. It is working on crop livestock integration, and the main crops that we are working on is groundnut and talpi, <coughs> and small ruminants, that is sepal goods. So the first result area deals with the baseline survey that we have already done take before we identify and select our farmers and the districts. Then the second, the second one is on modeling. Um, and one thing I forgot to say that the project is a regional project. Um, it's being conducted in the Gambia, Ghana, Mali, and Benin. So whatever the results of this exercise, Nobody stands all by himself and says, I did it. In the same way, if it fails, it is all of us who have failed. And I'm sure nobody wants to be um, identified with failures. Officials highlighted the need for such innovative platforms as a major way of intensifying production processes, especially in the areas of crop and small ruminant production. I remember in those days, um, when we were young researchers, when we were uh, talking about this farming systems research and extension, whereby um, researchers um, would be on their own, um, conceive ideas, um, develop uh, themes, um, come up with research activities, and then at the end of the day, without the participation of the other actors, um, come up with ideas, come up with new technologies, but then there is always the problem of how to move the technology from the research field to the end users. The grant for the small livestock integration project, though small and could not attain countrywide coverage. However, it is hoped that with the success story of the first phase of the project, future funding could be secured to expand and build on the gains made. Samuel Ba, GRTS. The United Nations Development Program, in partnership with the Women's Bureau, recently organized a day seminar to validate and disseminate the gender-responsive budget at national levels. Fatima Tasimaha has details of that story in this report. Policies empower women to tackle poverty on the UNDP's development objective in improving the socio-economic status of vulnerable groups, particularly women and girls in urban, rural, and peri-urban areas, while ensuring participatory planning and improved management of development activities, recognizing the need to focus on enhancing the human capital of the poor. It is in that light the Women's Bureau aim at sensitizing stakeholders on the gender-responsive budget policies report. The Deputy Speaker and Chairperson of the National Women's Council, Honorable Fatum Bai, spoke of the commitment of the Office of the Vice President to use the Gender Responsive Budget Assessment Report and the Vision 2010-2020 as the main development framework of the country. For a coherent participatory and multi-sectoral approach to come up with a gender responsive budget analysis of all government departments and institutions. Madam Bai also said the gap between female holders and men should be narrow, particularly a number of issues touched on that are of essential to the work of gender responsive budget, adding that the validation comes at a time when gender related issues contest of the MDGs and Vision 2020. Bintu Gasama of Women's Bureau, who deputized the Permanent Secretary, Office of the Vice President and Women's Affairs Minister, said the pronouncement by government to curtail non-priority expenditure to ensure that key programs aimed at poverty reduction and employment creation are given due priority in a serious step in the right direction. The government of the Gambia recognizes the importance of macroeconomic policy in shaping women's living standards and their prospects for economic empowerment. Gender budgets are a powerful tool in achieving development ob objectives as they reflect gender commitments and can contribute to achieving the objectives of gender equality, human development, and economic efficiency. Madam Chairperson, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the draft assessment report that we are about to validate also examines how budgetary process processes take into consideration the critical concerns of women and men as well as issues regarding resource allocation and government spending 
in the national budget. Gatama further said there is a need for symbiotic efforts from all stakeholders to ensure successful implementation of the gender responsive budget. During her presentation, Dr. Sigajan Jalo revealed that the gap between the rural and the urban poor needs to be bridged as poverty are as more inherent in urban areas. This synergy for various stakeholders aim at disseminating effective, efficient, gender responsive assessment report that will make a difference in all women and girls. For GRTS News, I am Fatuma Tasimaha. The Department of Youth and Sports has concluded a capacity enhancement program for personnel of the Ministry of Youth and Sports. The synergy is designed to improve the awareness of participants of the planning, monitoring and evaluation strategies of the aligned ministry. Babukar Kamara reports. It is a three-day capacity building training program pioneered by the Department of Youth and Sports under a new administration with a forward-looking vision and strategy. We brought her to work on the planning situation of the department, the whole Ministry of Youth and Sports. So based on that, she came out with this idea that before coming up to start her work properly, she needs to invite the regional officers to come over with the stakeholders within the ministry to come and share ideas on monitoring and evaluation. The Capacity Building Forum seeks to induct officials and stakeholders in youth and sports development with requisite knowledge and skills, particularly when the civil service is under reformation. The government over the years has changed this program directive from a normal side of budgeting to program-based budgeting. So as a matter of fact, we feel that all our staff, including our stakeholders in the youth rata meeting, should be brought together so that they are enlightened as to how the transform, whole transformation is taking place. So by way of that, it's come to planning, you know, monitoring, evaluation, particularly again with regards to their report writing formats. As participants gather to acquaint themselves with principles and procedures, officials are optimistic for an efficient workforce capable to implement policies and program of action for the Youth and Sports Ministry. Babukar Kamara. GRTS. Well, we're going to take a very short break now. The news continues in just a moment. What's your what's number? 773. What's your mobile number? 735. What's your AFRICEL number? 746. What's your number? My number is 215. <laughs> 2? You mean 72? No, it's 2, and I am AFRICEL 2. AFRICEL 2? Hey, hey. Yes, two is AfriCell two. Hey, hey. AfriCell introduces the new AfriCell series, the number two. Welcoming the number two to the AfriCell family. La, 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 la. From now on, the AfriCell lines will not only start with the number seven, but also with the number two. Get a new AfriCell SIM card now that starts with the number two. So now I can get an AfriCell number that starts with the number two. Yes. And when you receive a call from a number starting with the number 2, it's one of the new AfriCell lines calling you. My mobile number is 2, and we are AfriCell 2! Welcome back to GRTS News. African leaders have offered support to efforts aimed at driving Islamic militants from northern Mali. Representatives of the African Union, ECOWAS UN, and the European Union met in Bamako in another desperate move to settle the long-drawn insurgency in Mali. Meanwhile, the African Union has called for another meeting with the possibility of sanctioning military action against the militants. We have details of that story in this report. Representatives from about 20 countries met in Bamako on Friday to lay plans to wrestle back control of northern Mali from Islamist rebels. The overall mood following the meeting was positive. We are on the right track and we believe that a conclusion is not far off. Representatives from the African Union, ECOWAS, United Nations and European Union say they are a step closer to reaching a consensus over whether to launch a military operation. Last week, the UN Security Council adopted a resolution giving ECOWAS 45 days to prepare the details of its plan to send 3,000 troops. 
Negotiations with the